I am so freaking excited for this full moon, you guys. Like, hell freaking yes. You want to watch the first part of this video because I'm about to drop some powerful ass shit, okay? So just, just watch. Welcome to the Aries full moon video. Yes, another horoscope video because this full moon is badass and I'm gonna explain why. So yes, we are doing another horoscope video because I actually wanna talk about this full moon. I'm excited for it, but prepare for new content in the next week. I'm so freaking excited. <laughs> Alright, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Tani Michelle and basically we do a bunch of spiritual shit over here. So you do not want to miss out. Hit that subscribe button if you are not subscribed. If you're new here, let me know down below. Is this your first time here? If you're not new here and you've been here, hello, welcome back my people, my fellow weird ones. And let's go ahead and get into this Aries full mother effing moon. Oh! I am so freaking excited for this full moon, you guys. Like, hell freaking yes. This full moon is basically like, yo, okay, here's the deal. Here's the tea. We have been doing what everybody else wants us to do. We have been keeping the peace. We have been focusing on everybody else, considering everybody else, worried about everybody else, worried about our relationships, our commitments. We've been compromising, okay? And this Aries full moon is like, nah. I'm done. This is about me. This Aries full moon is giving us permission to do us, right? Do you for this Aries full moon. This Aries full moon is literally shining a light on where we need to assert ourselves, where we need to step into our confidence, where we need to step into our leadership, where we need to step into our authenticity, and where we need to leave behind things that keep us from doing so. Let's back up here for a second. So a full moon often highlights a certain area of our life that we need to embrace to bring in more harmony, more balance, and more of a fulfillment within our lives. So the sun's been traveling through the sign of Libra, which is very considerate. It's very social. It's worried about everybody else. It's doing what it needs to do to keep the peace, to keep the balance, to socialize. And it can sometimes gloss over the individual priorities, desires, and needs of the individual, of ourselves, for the sake of the relationship, for the sake of the union, for the sake of others, right? And so this Aries full moon, opposite of Libra, is shining a light on where we need to put ourselves first in a situation or somewhere in our lives where we maybe haven't been doing so up until this point. This Aries full moon is giving us permission to be selfish, right? And this is something I really wanted to talk about in this full moon video. There is just so much ingrained within us and programmed within us as a society subconsciously that it is bad to be selfish even though we are all inherently selfish. So it's a paradox. It's literally like a way to shame ourselves for things that we did for us, for things that keep us in our authenticity, in our individuality. Like there is a reason we are human. We have egos for a reason. We are inherently selfish, self-preservation, right? Like yes, it's okay to help other people. But even if you are the most considerate, nicest fucking person in the world, guess freaking what? You are doing it because you get something out of it, right? We can run around all day trying to not be selfish, trying to people please, trying to help everybody else out. But here is the tea. Even if you are the nicest person on the face of the fucking planet, you're going to have conflict. If you freaking won a million dollars and gave it all to the homeless, guess what? Somebody's gonna say that you are a show off. Someone's gonna have something bad to say about it. You are never going to please everybody. So beginning to embrace conflict is literally life-changing. When you can start saying, okay, I'm okay with conflict, everything freaking changes. And on top of that, even if you are someone that loves to help people, I'm someone that loves to help people, right? But I know it's selfish too. Helping people is selfish. You can do what you would think is the most unselfish freaking thing on the planet. And guess what? It's not because polarity duality exists. So there is a reason you're doing it. Even if it's that you love just helping other people, even if that it just feels right to help other people, even that you're getting something out of it, right? Like you are getting something out of it. So we can sit here and pretend and fool ourselves like, oh, I'm not being selfish. But at the end of the day, 
we can't give from an empty cup. I know you've heard that freaking term so many freaking times, but it is true, right? Because when you are giving and you're empty and your desires are not fulfilled, the things that you want, the things that you actually like care about, you are not being authentic to yourself and you're just fulfilling other things for other people, guess what? The things that you begin to give them don't have as much meaning or quality. People don't appreciate it as much. Like you're basically giving from a dirty cup. So everything that you give is going to be dirty, right? Like it's, it's not going to be at the freaking quality that it could be if you were good on the inside and overflowing, right? Not to mention being authentic, being true to your nature, being true to your individuality, being true to who you really freaking are is actually a beautiful fucking thing because then from there you attract the right people into your lives you're not playing games with people and that's what this full moon i believe is about is like where in our lives are we compromising too much are we committing to things that we don't want to be committed to are we doing things for the sake of others or to not start a conflict and where do we need to step into things that feel better for us where we need to follow our desires and our needs and our wants and what we actually want that is maybe being repressed because we don't want to start a conflict with other people right when we people please we actually end up taking the chance from other people to get to know the authentic us right and so either way no matter how you look at it it is okay to be fucking selfish in fact so many of us would benefit so much more from being more selfish and so would the people around us we would literally die so easily if we didn't have egos if we weren't selfish because it's there for a reason self-preservation self-preservation now i'm not saying you need to go out of your way and intentionally be a dick and intentionally hurt other people that's not fucking cool but it is okay to worry about you and that is what this aries full moon is really bringing up what's also so interesting about this full moon is it's going to be conjunct chiron so it's showing us where we have insecurities around asserting ourselves asserting our needs asserting our desires where we have insecurities around actually chasing the desires that we have actually initiating the things that we want where do we have wounds and insecurities and feelings of unworthiness around doing the things that would fulfill us that would light that fire in our soul that would give us a sense of purpose right and also this aries full moon can show us where we've been maybe trying to prove ourselves in a way that isn't really aligned with who we are right maybe we've been trying to prove ourselves by making other people happy and you know doing things for others but not really doing things for ourselves and so this is a beautiful time to get back in touch with your authenticity who you really fucking are and what you you really desire out of your life and where you need to initiate yourself more where you need to take the lead where you need to own your confidence own who you are claim who you are and just freaking go if you've been denying a part of yourself or if you've been denying yourself if you've not been stepping into the things that you want the things that spark your fucking flame the things that make you feel alive this is what this is for this aries full moon is like hey why are these things holding you back these old insecurities these old worthiness wounds these old wounds surrounding stepping into who you are you know because you don't want to upset other people or because of commitments that you have with other people or you you're trying to make other people happy or you're scared of what other people think right like this is a time to be bold and step truly into your desires and step truly in to initiating asserting yourself this is what this aries full moon is for and who cares if someone thinks one way about it or another or who cares if people don't agree or who cares if people don't like it like this is you stepping into who you really are and the flame within you the the fire within you what's also beautiful about this full moon is venus is right there with the sun opposite of this full moon so this really does bring up the topic of relationships the topic of commitments saturn is also involved so we have commitments you know and we're really trying to weigh out are we really responsible for everybody else and their opinions of us and how they see us and what they think and and these commitments or are we more responsible 
for ourselves? Are we more responsible for our desires and what we want and our ambitions and the things that we actually want to step into? You know, that is exactly what this full moon is bringing up for us in this energy. Like we're really taking a step back and seeing where our relationships, our commitments, the things that, you know, the people in our lives, the social situations in our lives, all of that may not be feeling aligned with who we are and so it's a beautiful time to really embrace your truth it's a beautiful time to quit avoiding conflict it's a beautiful time to see where you've had insecurities or where you need to heal in terms of stepping into your confidence and stepping into who you really are and doing what's right for you that's really what this aries full moon is it's really stepping into initiating something that feels more right to you and your individuality and stepping into your confidence and stepping into leading yourself through something regardless of what other people think about it right asserting yourself so this full moon is, is helping us to be more assertive and to no longer let our old wounds our old insecurities hold us back and to no longer allow other people's opinions of us or you know trying to avoid conflict to hold us back. There may be a, a middle ground here. There may be a way to compromise, right? It may not just be me or other people, right? Like there may be a beautiful way to, to move through this and to find like a middle ground here. So it doesn't have to be so black or white. Either way, this is like permission for us to step back into our badassery, back into our own fire. And this is a time where we are also like really shedding old versions of us that are no longer aligned, right? Old versions of us that are insecure, that are holding us back, that are wounded, and that don't feel like we can do it, right? Like this is another big thing I was getting for this full moon. Like, where do you feel like you can't do something, right? Like, where do you feel like, oh, I can't do that, it's scary, or it would be risky, or whatever. This Aries full moon is coming in and lighting a fire under our asses and saying, yes, you fucking can. Like, remember who the fuck you are. And so I hope this is like, I, I feel like I'm like giving a sermon right now, but like, I hope this is inspiring and like motivating you because our desires are so freaking crucial, you guys. Like our desires are so freaking crucial. They're such a, a huge part of our lives a huge part of why we're even here in the first place to fulfill our desires it's like that spark is like our soul our sense of purpose speaking to us and if we're caught up in what everybody else is doing what everybody else wants what everybody else thinks considering how it's going to affect everybody else then we're not being us where can we lead from this like energy where can we face some of these old insecurities by maybe doing something that's going to really help us face that fear that's really going to help us move through those old insecurities those old wounds those old you know things that tell us like oh i couldn't do that right like chiron i always say is basically like our our curse and our gift it's like our it's like our superpower really it's it's somewhere where we have felt very wounded very insecure not good enough like unworthy you know guilty or just maybe even like somewhat like embarrassed about something i have chiron right on my ascendant so <laughs> i'm very much uh, familiar with chiron chiron shows us where we can take that and turn it into our superpower, like where we can do something with that, right? Like where the curse actually becomes our gift, where we can help other people. And so with this full moon on Chiron, it's really shining a massive spotlight on a wound that we have with asserting ourselves, on a wound that we have with stepping into our confidence and, and self-leadership, right? like stepping into the alpha, the, the the badass that we are, instead of worrying about the opinions of everybody else. And honestly, from what I see in this chart, other people I don't think will have that much of a problem with it, right? I don't think they're gonna care as much as we think that they are. With Venus opposite of this full moon, again, I think people are going to have an easy time reconciling it or harmonizing it. and and maybe even like be super freaking cool about it, right? That may not be the case for everybody, but there can be a middle ground found here. And uh, it may not be as crazy as we think it is to step into asserting ourselves in something, right? And so we're really kind of seeing, you know, should I just keep my mouth shut or not do anything for the sake of everybody else? Or do I need to embrace 
my authenticity in this situation, my individuality in this situation? Do I need to go from we to me, right? What's good for me instead of what's good for you and everybody else, right? And so that's really what this full moon is showing us and bringing up for us. So hopefully this resonated with you. Let me know down below if this resonated with you, how you're feeling with this full moon and all of that. I really, really, really want to hear your guys' experiences with this full moon and like let's let's have a conversation. I love reading your guys' comments and by the way, thank you guys so, so much for all of your support on the last video. That was kind of me asserting myself and embracing my own authenticity and it's just been absolutely beautiful how supportive you guys have been. And I'm so, so excited to be doing new content within the next week, starting within the next week. So bear with, stay tuned. I'm going to very quickly go over what this means for each sign. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because this is my second time doing it. Yeah, it's short and sweet. That's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, Aries, this full moon's in your first house. So this is all about you. Everything I said in the beginning of this video is going to apply to you. So definitely make sure that you watch the beginning of this video if you haven't. But this is all in your first house. So this is definitely about you, your identity, what you want, where you need to take the initiative, where you need to lead, right? And where maybe you've been compromising too much of your will, too much of what you desire with other people, with really relationships, maybe even too, too overly considerate or too, too many commitments, you know, where you need time to do you and there's going to be, you know, possibly some healing that needs to happen here with yourself and seeing where you may be holding yourself back from embracing who you really are. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Aries. Check the description below for more from me as always. And we are going to move on to Taurus. So Taurus, this full moon is happening in your 12th house. So this is a time where you kind of need to like take a step back, get away, do you, go rest, you know, go do something for you, kind of retreating from something else to go do you, right? Like maybe you've been too consumed with work and coworkers and employees and whatever in your day-to-day -day life, too consumed with trying to balance everything out, what everybody else thinks and consider everybody else. And this is a time where it's like, I need to take a step back and go do me, boo. Like this is not... This is not working, right? <laughs> so this is taking a step back for you and really getting back to your own individuality and authentic nature by taking a step back, taking a break, maybe releasing some things, facing some old insecurities and wounds that are holding you back, some self-sabotaging behaviors. So that is what I'm seeing for you. Uh, Taurus, as always, there is more down below. And if you haven't seen the first part of this video, definitely go check that out. Gemini, this full moon for you is happening in your 11th house of friends and social networks and where you like fit in in the world and what you want and so this is like really like seeing your desires from like a larger scale and seeing where you're not fulfilling the things that you want to fulfill for you where you may be too considerate of other people your relationships your dating life children etc and where you're not going after what you really want in terms of the world in terms of owning your desires in terms of your social life in terms of maybe leading something within your social life or within your network, you know, and embracing healing in that area as well. So that is what I'm saying for you, Gemini. As always, there's more down below. And I shared a lot in the beginning that everyone will be able to relate to. So if you haven't seen, if you didn't watch the beginning, go check that out. Cancer, this full moon for you is happening in your 10th house of your career, your public image, your long-term goals, your future. So this is like really letting go of maybe some of the shit at home where you've been committing too much, compromising too much with your family, your home life, behind the scenes stuff, your personal life stuff, and where you need to step more into asserting yourself with your ambitions, with your long-term goals, with your career, with your desires for what you want in the world and what you want in your life. And uh, so you could also be seeing where some healing needs to be done there as well. You could be seeing where some of your insecurities with maybe being seen or your public image or your career are kind of coming to the surface to be released, you know? And so that is what I'm seeing for you, Cancer. Let me know down below if this resonates. And then also I have other things if you're interested in more from me linked in my description below. We are gonna move on to Leo. So my fellow Leo Risings, this full moon's happening in our ninth house of higher education, our belief systems teaching, learning, etc. So those are some of the things that we could definitely see coming up for this. But I really feel like this is like our long term goals and what really gives us a sense of purpose, what really fulfills us, you know, this could really 
kind of awaken us to some things that are holding us back in our lives, some things that we thought we knew, but we're getting a different perspective on, you know, maybe we've been committing too much or trying to keep the peace and trying to compromise in our day-to-day -day lives and with the people in our day-to-day -day lives that we're not really actually going for what we want in terms of travel education you know our long-term sense of desires like our, our long-term desires our long-term purpose etc and some of this could be also playing out in terms of our relationships as well our significant relationships with saturn involved so we could really be kind of weighing out like what we actually want, what we actually desire in our lives. So let me know down below, Leo, if any of that resonates. As always, I'd love to hear your feedback. And uh, also down below in my description, I have more stuff if you would like more from me as always. Virgo darling, this full moon is happening in your eighth house of other people's money and shit and shared finances and resources. So this is a time where you're really wanting to come into more independence, wanting to come into more of your assertive leader-like nature in terms of finances and money and other people's stuff that you're involved with, right? Like you're wanting to take more control over your finances. You're wanting to be in the lead more rather than compromising your priorities and resources, etc., for maybe other people or other things. And so this is a time where you're like really trying to step back into your confidence with money and finances and really start like leading, you know, and really assert yourself in situations. And you could also be seeing where you have certain insecurities here that are holding you back from doing this or old wounds that need to be healed that are holding you back from doing this. So let me know down below, Virgo, if that ends up resonating with you. And uh, as always, I have a lot of shit linked down in my description if you would like more from me. And with that being said, we are going to move on to Libra. So Libra, this full moon's in your seventh house of partnerships, relationships, your significant relationships in your life, marriage, etc. So this is like your close relationships, right? And so this full moon's really shining a spotlight on this area of your life. There could be a lot going on in terms of, you know, your relationship dynamics, your relationship with yourself versus your relationship with others, and really going after what you really want in life with your relationships, really asserting yourself in relationships. Or this could be shining a light on your partner if you are already in a relationship and you know some of the things that they may be having come up with this, right? So either way, relationships are a big deal uh, and that is kind of coming to the forefront for this full moon. So let me know down below if any of that resonates and what you do see coming up from this full moon, Libra. And uh, I have more stuff down in the description below. Scorpio, this full moon's happening in your sixth house of your daily work, tasks, duties, health, all the things that you need to keep up with like your daily life, your lifestyle, maintenance, things like that. So this full moon is really bringing up those topics of work, health, your daily tasks, and where you need to step more into your ambitious, you know, leadership, independent like side here, right? You've been really kind of focused on things going on behind the scenes and balancing things going on behind the scenes, maybe with mental health or, you know, healing or releasing or whatever. And now it's like, this is, it's time to like, kick shit into gear, you know, it's time to get, you know, maybe you're wanting to get more physical, maybe you're wanting to work out more, maybe you're getting more motivated in terms of your work, your job and asserting yourself in terms of those things. But you're also this full moon is also shining a light on insecurities and past wounds that could be holding you back from doing that that you may need to heal and work through. So let me know down below Scorpio if that resonates and what you do see come up with this full moon. As always, I would really, really like to hear your feedback. And as always, as well, I have a ton of shit linked in my description if you would like more from me and with that being said we are going to move on to Sag so Sagittarius this full moon is happening in your fifth house of romance dating children the things that you do for joy and fun sports you know anything that really sets your heart on fire and so this full moon is really a time of like okay what actually like what am I actually passionate about what actually sets my heart on fire what brings me joy where do I need to assert myself more in terms of what's authentic to me because maybe you've been really focused on how that appears to other people you've been more focused on the surface level stuff possibly in terms of networking and how other people People see you and friends and social life and all of that and now it's like wait what actually is the most meaningful to me what actually makes me feel authentic and and like you know 
passionate and all of those things. And so this is really stepping back into the things that make you ambitious and the things that you love. But this could also be bringing up certain insecurities and wounds in terms of those subjects I named off of your fun, your passion, the things that you love, the things that bring you joy, children, dating, romance. So those are some things that could be brought up as well. So let me know down below, Sagittarius, if this resonates. I'd love to hear your feedback as always. And as always, I have more linked in my description if you'd like more from me and if you'd like to follow me. Capricorn, this full moon's happening in your fourth house. So where do you need to step it up and take more of a lead in terms of your family? Where do you need to assert yourself more in terms of your family and home life and personal life? And also, you know, this could be shining a spotlight on certain insecurities from childhood and from the past coming up for you to finally face and work through and move through, right? So you're really stepping into more of an assertive position. You're really maybe having to take action and do more of what's good for you in terms of your family and home life, or maybe take on a leadership role in a situation in your family and home life. And so that's what I'm saying for you, Capricorn. Let me know down below if that ends up resonating. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback. And as always, I have more linked down in my description below if you would like more from me. So moving on. On to Aquarius. This full moon is happening in your third house. So I feel like for Aquarius Risings, this is all about asserting your opinion more, speaking your truth, asserting what you think, asserting what you feel, really putting it out there, right? And not being so hung up on what everybody else is going to think and everybody else's beliefs and you know, trying to keep the peace and what's fair for everybody. Like, no, this is about asserting yourself more in your day-to-day -day life and the things that you do and the things that you want to do, following your desires more. And you may be really seeing where you have certain insecurities or old wounds that keep you from doing that, right? So that's what I'm seeing for you for this uh, Aries full moon. Aquarius, let me know down below. If that resonates, I'd love to hear your feedback as always. And also, if you would like more from me, see my description below. Moving on to Pisces. Pisces, this full moon is happening in your second house of money, income, your priorities, your values, the things that are important to you. And so this full moon is shining a light on those topics, but it's also going to be on Chiron, which is your insecurities and wounds in these areas and these topics as well. So you may be addressing some things that need to be healed in terms of values, money, finances, income, and your priorities, and maybe letting go of trying to make everybody else happy when it comes to money and sharing finances and commitments, etc., and more focused on you and your individual needs, your individual finances. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Pisces. Let me know down below if that resonated. I really, really love to hear your feedback. And if you would like more from me, visit my description below. With that being said, that is all for the horoscopes and that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I'm so, so excited to begin this next journey of posting new content within the next week. I will see you guys soon.